accidentally clicked it. We're live! I didn't accidentally click it. I was just trying to figure out, I always feel like there's things that I'm missing, and uh, I think we're good. So, welcome back. Today we have a Mercedes C300. We're doing five? Five. We're doing five on the back, 20 on the front. Um, we're doing Pro Classic, so this is going to be a standard job. Um, and, uh, and we're going to have a good time. So what do we have on the schedule today as far as we're going to do um, plotter, kind of. We're, we're going to try around the plotter a little bit more because I, I said, <laughs> because I said last time, um, once we get a pro classic job and a little bit of time, we'll be able to play around with a little, little bit more. So I, I don't know exactly what windows we're going to do. But let's try a couple, let's see how they line up, and then we're probably gonna just recut them out because that's probably how it's gonna go. But we're gonna see what kind of top edges that we get on this. So the first thing that we're gonna have to do is obviously prep, and then just, uh, we have some time. So I'm happy to, uh, to see that. And we gotta fly right now, that's fun. It's getting colder, it's no fun. <laughs> Vegeta, Manny, Michael, Sean, how you guys doing? You guys are here first. Welcome. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I somehow, I'm going to have to buy the extra microphone. I keep forgetting to charge this thing. So this has been charged for probably about 20, 20 minutes or so, which is not enough time. They should have replaceable batteries on this thing, but it's so tiny. I want my car cut. You can sell me some. I don't want to do kits, though. Kits are work. Like, if I, ah, uh, man, years ago, years ago, I used to do kits. It's just, there's so many little things. Like, it's hard enough getting an order form together for a car and then actually cutting, weeding, shipping. Sort it off at of eBay. <laughs> no, go to Tint Zoom. If you want GeoShield film, you can get it off of Tint Zoom. I was thinking about doing my windshield again this weekend, so why not? Just do it. So if you don't like the plotter, can we play? Can we pay to watch you smash the thing? <laughs> it will take it out back, uh, like they did in Office Space with the with the fax machine, and we'll get the baseball bat, and then and then that'll be it. We'll play some. Some music. We'll beat it up. I work out of a tent here in Connecticut. The winter sucks. It gets really cold. <laughs> I've seen that here in Michigan, too. Uh, propane heater, sidewalls, and uh, get a thermostat. Just keep that sucker running here and there. It was, uh, it, yeah, not fun. That's why I definitely suggest finding a space. They'll pay for themselves. I mean, they, they cost money in the beginning, but they, they always cost money, but, you know, they'll, they'll pay for themselves. All right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, I think this thing's charged maybe enough. I don't know. It's probably going to die partway through, so we're going to have to deal with that when that happens, but it'll get us, we'll get a good run off of it. We have stickers in our windshields. How to put them? Um, I don't know. If if you have like, so here they'll have what are they called? Inspection stickers. You can just lightly stick them back to the window or like laminate them with something. Like there's just put something in between there. Why are the closed captions on? Oh, is that working? I, I wanted to see what it was like. I think that's a, YouTube just added that. You just push the button, you can shut them off. Close captions, off. Close caption on, right? You should be able to just turn it on, turn it off. It still doesn't show them to me. Do I have to open like another window or something? I actually want to see this. Here, let me, uh, let me search tint. 
Is mine gonna pop up? You don't even find my live stream when you search tent. But you do find my channel a lot. Because what I wanted to see was like, oh yeah, look at that. Here, let me, uh, you just hit the button and they turn right off. If you guys don't want them on, turn them off. I'm glad that they autoplay though, that's awesome. Because you guys may, may believe this or not, but people, people sit there with the audio off and then they read. So that's a thing. I have a 12 by 20, it's called a rhino shelter. As long as it's got sidewalls, that helps, but I've tinted a little bit in a tent. Um, it was uh, when the business was smaller, um, so this was like mobile tinting, right? We, we had an account um, with like remote starter companies, they get really, really busy in the winter time. So they just, they don't have any space to give for window tinting. Window tinting slows down. So it was a way for the owner uh, to keep tinting um, and then not slow it down. So he just, whatever it took, so he got a tent. He, he, I, I, I can talk a little bit more about it, but he doesn't do that anymore. <laughs> it gets annoying. So let's throw on the headset and Let's see, GoPro. I watch you during the staff meetings and don't pay attention to the meetings. <laughs> well, now you can use closed captions. If you can't keep the sound on, then that's a way to do it. I like that they have it as a setting. Um, so any, any one of those little changes, like that's a, that's a big one right there. If you pay attention to a lot of YouTube videos, um, more people are putting captions at the front, like big bold ones, embedded into their video for like the first 30 seconds. What kind of extension battery do you have for the GoPro? I have uh, whatever the smallest uh, anchor battery that I could find. Um, so it's, it's like a 6,500 milliwatt hour or something like that. I don't know, it might be a little bit more, but something along those lines. And I have it plugged in um, I couldn't find anything smaller. I tried looking into like FPV batteries and all types of other stuff. There's just nothing that really works. So, or nothing that's really smaller. So we're gonna be doing 20. And we have this machine here. Should we do a short roll or should we do a long roll? Do we wanna cut both or just one? Let's do one. Let's do one at a time here. So, that would be this guy right here. I don't think I've used this for a 24 inch roll yet. I gotta learn where roller positions are. Can I just leave it in that? No, you can't. It's so dumb. Uh, it's really dumb. Maybe this one? Ah. This one. Okay, so the left roller is going to stay fixed, and then the right roller is something that we're going to have to move between like a 36 and a 24. That's not the end of the world. That's not the end of the world. A little annoying, but whatever. Okay, so then we hit this button. We push this over here. Normally you would just lock the bar down and then you'd put it through like the setup. It'd be real quick. This one, it'll be quick the more you get used to it. So then we can, we can pop that right there. It's my origin point now. Canon, thanks for doing what you do. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for watching. So we're going to get into our software here. 
I think it takes a minute to pop up. Once it does, there it is. I will show you. So, desktop. There we go. So this is a Mercedes. It's gonna start with the year. What's the year? I don't care. Nine thirteen. So this was thirteen. Uh, Mercedes. McLaren, Mitsubishi. No, Mercedes. Uh, wow. Okay, C class. It's a C three hundred. Fourteen to oh eight. Fifteen to oh seven. Okay, so that's going to be this one right here. I'm just not even used to looking at this anymore. So let me get. As long as these look close. So our back glass. That's got that little cutout, so this should be the right car. Um, front roll up left, front roll up right. Now, when they say left, is that sitting <laughs> in the car? It should be. This should be the passenger one, right? Because when we cut them out, it's going to cut out on the film, and then you're going to lay it on there. This should be the right one. Cool. So we have a like 24 inch roll. So we're going to say 23. We're going to see how much space we have. We have plenty. That's nice. And then I guess we're going to get ready to click cut. Is that it? Is that all I need to do? And go. Let's see if this works. Oh, it's doing a thing. Look at that. Look at what that's doing. Left is driver's side. Oh, you're right. We cut out the driver's window. Is it? So that's different. That's different than some other softwares. So it's when you're sitting in the car, left side, right side. Okay, it's like an airplane. Well, you, what, how would you know that unless you knew that already? <laughs> okay, so what's interesting about this is, let me just show you guys really quick. So pattern is like that. Isn't that opposite then? Yeah, it is. It, it's actually opposite. So the way that it shows you oriented is as if you're on the outside looking in, not on the inside looking out. Some softwares, they do it the other way. Ooh, okay. All right, well, we got a driver's door. I don't know if we'll use it. We're gonna cut out the passenger one. This is the part that I hate about learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you have to like, oh shoot, when you go and you cut all your doors out, um, and then all of a sudden you're like, you have to take a step back and go like, it, like you mess one up and you have to go recut it. There's just all these little things like, wait, what should I do? I have to cut again. But once you get used to it, then that's fine. See, it was like the same thing with, with uh, airplanes. They refer to left side, right side. Um, but I forgot which way. I think it's like the pilot sitting in the cabin as well. So let's see. We don't even know if our settings are right, right now. So we're gonna find out if our settings are right. <gasps> Ooh, that was clean. That's exactly where we want it. We cut out ceramic last time. We lowered the pressure a little bit. That's perfect. That's exactly what you wanna see. Boats, you can always remember port is left. Oh, I'm never going to remember that. Not unless I always had a boat. So another good thing is to keep the flat edge towards the very edge of the tint. I know I didn't do that for this one, but it just gives you less to weed if, if everything goes right. So we're going to see where that, that goes. Because um, we should be all set, right? We can just cut another one.
Oh. There it goes. Other software gives you options to mirror cut. Yeah, don't look at this software for features. Not at all. This software is so bare bones. It's kind of ridiculous. You look at this one compared to all the other ones and you're like, wait, what? <laughs> Oh, this one. No, he pre-cut one, I'm gonna cry. Oh, come on. Like, we can't try it out. Good grief, you guys. <laughs> I like touch a plotter and you guys are like, what is he doing? Super. Whoa, what did it think I said? Felt card? Oh, that was fun. Christopher! Christopher Ramirez super chatted $4.99. Do I, $4 put this in my hat? Do I have to heat shrink sunroofs? Hold it. The purity. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. You guys haven't seen the first three quarters of my tinning career. Um, maybe half, actually, at this point. Um, but Christopher, thank you for the five. Do I have to heat shrink sunroofs? Absolutely. Sunroofs are not flat either. Um, some of them have a little shrinking. Some of them have a lot, especially the big panoramic ones. So they're typically really tight. Uh, on the on the edges, some of them have a good border, but a lot of them that I've done don't. So you have to also keep your cuts really close to the edge on some of them. Just check them before you go to tin it. I think this one has a sunroof, uh, but I would absolutely shrink it. This one has a little sunroof. This is kind of pre-panoramics on everything. Oh, and it's closed. Can we just, is this... Oh, yeah. Ugh. This one actually has a decent border here, so I wouldn't be super annoyed at this one at all. But, yeah, it's got a little curve. So for even being a little sunroof here, yeah, you're going to want to shrink that. Looked at your older videos. You were so young. <laughs> Those were the days. That's when I was. That's when I was twenty. Ugh. There's a little. Oh, that's from when we were doing all types of stuff there. Okay. So the the question for this one. Oh wait wait wait. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's prep this. The goal, the, the question from that is, is it going to fit? And how are those top edges going to go? And all our tape rolls are on the other side of the car. Here we go. Tint mustache. <laughs> we could cut one out again. The 15C300 has a knowingly tight border. Plotters are great for, for borders. Um, on this one, this one's not too bad. You know, one, one small change I'm going to make or try to remind myself is like, we all say plotter cut, but really it's about the software that you use along with that plotter. So we're using film cut which is incredibly generic. <laughs> if anything, it makes it confusing. But instead of plotter cut, I'm going to try and say film cut. Because it's like, it almost gives the wrong impression. If you're just get any software with your plotter, you're in for, for a different time than I'm going to have with mine.
All right, we'll leave that there. The software is Dodo. Doo doo. <laughs> we'll see. I know not much about it at all. So if it doesn't work out, then uh, then that's not good. It's kind of a lot. I don't know what else I'd use though. That's the thing. I've had bad enough experiences with a lot of other stuff. I'd recommend not weeding it before shrinking it. Nah, I like shrinking them. I like doors, I'll weed them, and then I'll shrink them, and then I'll install them. For back windows, sometimes I'll do differently. Like I'll leave a border on a back window, and then I'll weed it after the fact. Actually, I think I typically would do that. So for a back window, yes. For the doors, no. But for some, for some people, that little bit of a uh, little bit of extra tint at the bottom, like the the liner, you'll notice when you peel your tint and you go to shrink it, uh, that that liner is going to shrink faster. So with some films, it'll be totally fine, and with some, it'll be a real big irritation. What's the point of the tape at the bottom? It just helps the carpet shield stick better if it doesn't want to stick. Helps create more of a water barrier there. It's not the most important thing to do. It just became some habit recently from other door panels with like a lot of armor all or just <laughs> didn't like carpet shield very much. Which I'll still always say, if you guys want to find me a better solution than carpet shield, please do. But it seems like everybody just goes and gets carpet shield. The Expel covers were, were decent, especially if we're gonna put tape along the top. I just like doing things this way, like where you put something, where you, like, something sticky that I can just peel off the wall and then stick to the door panels. It's just faster for me. Oh, I think I left my clay bars in the bathroom. Do I have to go get that? I think I have to go get that. Oh yeah, one more. We're in full on grimy fall weather right now. That carpet shield has been a game charger. Game changer. Sold out at my local Home Depot in Lowe's. <laughs> I have to imagine construction companies use far more than window tinners do, but I don't know. I think I'm more annoyed that like I it it was a good enough solution and then it's just become like such a staple cuz I don't think anybody looks into anything else. <laughs> Uh, or maybe they just haven't found anything better. All right, so um, door that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. back window. We gotta prep the back window too. God, there's so much prep work now. I hate it. How much do you charge on average? Uh, most people end up going with like the carbon, carbon or ceramic. Um, but that's that's. Like, la like, like last winter, we had far more people doing pro classic. And then we, when we broke out into the summertime slash spring, 
Um, appointments were way more aggressive. Uh, people were booking out for weeks. Um, we're starting to see that taper off a lot. Um, and being that Michigan is frozen like six months out of the year, um, it's, it's less of a priority. So Pro Classic 240. which I definitely should up that, but I just haven't yet. It's one of those things where, you know, I, I know what the busy season's like, I, I know what a newer slow season's like, and until I'm consistent through some season, booked enough, like far enough out consistently in like grimy weather and whatnot, um, then, then I'd be, for sure going to raise it because then it's lost opportunity there. Carpet Shields should give you a percent by now. <laughs> Sun Distributing was looking into, uh, into getting a pallet of it so they could have it in their store. See, it's, <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, I have to imagine the recommendations that they get for Carpet Shield is really small in comparison to the entire construction industry, where like, you're gonna need like five rolls to cover like a house or something, like something ridiculous like that, and you, you get it regularly. Where a shop, you know, yeah, fair amount of tent shops, but if you just have a roll sitting on the shelf for like a month. It's just, there's not as much, there's just not as much volume there. Could be wrong. Maybe it's more than I think. Maybe we should get it and call it Tint Shield. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Daniel Rayner super chatted nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Good oh, morning, shit. Kumu's Maybe we should. World renowned Daniel Reyna. Indisputable with epic record holding Master Tinter, and we have in the arena the Master Matt. Daniel Reyna with a 10. Good. <laughs> I feel like I need an echoey microphone like they'll have in a wrestling arena. Good morning and Kumusta to the world renowned tent holding indisputable. Indisputable with epic record holding Master Tinter. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the 10. I appreciate that. That's way too flattering. Um, why is it why why do people got to got to got to knock on the way that I peel the the tint, the read the weed the patterns. You need to you need to or you weed it opposite with the film side down, make the cut in the corner and start weeding it. It will rip through the clear liner and end up like a hand cut pattern. It peeled clean though. I've been doing it that way for years. I mean, every once in a while I have snags, but if I flip it over the other way, I, that doesn't get rid of my snags though. But I did, I have seen like two or three different ways for weeding patterns. Like, it's, it's like installing at the end of the day, if it gets the job done and it looks the same, it's fine. We can we can try some different ways, but I, I really don't think that it's going to seem much different. Because I still, I peel away. I put it on the table, it's right there, I flick the corner, and I peel it away. But I just, it's one of those things that I, I didn't think would be a comment. It's like, I, it, but it's happened like Four or five times. Not knocking on your style, it just keeps it extra clear out of the way while two staging. 
Maybe I don't understand the comment then. Um, try reverse weeding for roll up. You weed it the opposite with the film down. Make the cut in the corner and start weeding it. We'll rip through the clear liner and end up like a handcuff. Oh, okay. No, I see what you're saying. It'll literally, so the way you do it literally rips. Don't you have to adjust your plotter a little bit more to, to, to mar into the, or etch into the pattern just a little bit more? I get what you're saying now. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. I thought people were like, like I, I get what you're saying, because there's the, the extra clear here, and then when we two-stage it, yeah, the, you want these sides to be a little tighter because all that's getting crammed into the sides. So the way you eat it breaks the tin off. I've never gotten that to work right. I love the the shelf slash gondola display that's badass. Oh, thanks. I had some help with that one. Uh, Sun Distributing, they're not far from me. They had a bunch of extra because of the building that they moved into. It just came with the building and the, it was just like sitting in storage. So they let me have some and yeah, we dressed it up. It was pretty fun. All right. So the question here is going to be, is this pattern going to work? And I guess I'm going to lazily clean this one because I'm, whatever it is, I don't know, maybe I should go. Okay, we'll just do what we, what we do. We got to shrink it too. It's all set up for that, so I should probably do that. I'm still waking up. I haven't done a 10 a.m. stream in a minute. But it's just the way it worked out today. All right. Any tips on removing old glue? Soapy water, razor blades, use that for doors. And then a steamer um, for a back window. Trash bag can help. Uh, but people are so quick to point out trash bags. Weather, weather depends on it too. So you could use a trash bag with like a steamer, but steamer and uh, use a tint adhesive remover like ATR or Awesome's another one that works. I picked up some uh, upholstery cleaner that was recommended in, in a group. So I bought like three cans of it. They said it worked for window tint removal pretty well. One second. All right, I gotta run, I gotta run over here. Cannon. I want to get a couple clay bars. That's why I was really interested about an upholstery cleaner. Like I didn't. So it even says in the description. So this is like, looks like a private label site. I don't know. Shiners, this stuff. Um, it says on their site too that this stuff works great for glue removal. But what I like is that it's an upholstery cleaner. What do we deal with? So if you could have a window tint cleaner actually also just help clean the interior, I mean, that sounds like a great option to me. So I have to try it. I haven't tried it yet because I haven't had the right stuff to try it with yet. <laughs> I haven't had a removal, but I do have it. 
No. Off radio. I got my windows tinted at a shop. They have bubbles, so I had to take it back. Still have bubbles. Oh, that's no good. That's a tough cycle to be in. I'm glad I don't have to worry about it, but I'm sorry. <laughs> really no fun. I'm guessing they're dirt specs. Bubbles, dirt spec. Um, is a steamer the only way to remove a back window? Uh, well, it's the easiest way to remove a back window. Um, some people will, uh, will spray like, I've seen more for simple green lately than I have. I've never gotten 409 to work. Um, but spraying something like simple green and then you cut out a trash bag and, and just tint over the tint with a twash, trash bag with a spray in the middle. Basically just helps it sit there. That should help remove, remove all that. Ooh, dang, do you think this is gonna fit? I'm curious. But removals are never easy. So I guess the other way to remove it is just take it to a shop and pay them to do it. What's the reputation of the shop that you went to? Oh, for the guy in chat. Oh, I see. I was like, wait, what? Okay. Not bad. I'd say that's actually pretty good. I'm wondering if this right here is because of the way that it's cutting on my plotter. That is more than acceptable though. Uh, acceptable for places that aren't here. Sorry, let me... Most people, this is, this is something that most people wouldn't notice here, but something that annoys me. And I'm going to probably say this might, this little wave might be because of my plotter right here. Um, this all lines up really, really nice. This little, there's a little hump right here. Um, the plotter is on a continuous cut and then you can see this little wobble happen in the film as it's cutting. But everything here, dude, that's really close. That's very nice. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that as far as a plotter goes. So if I were a shop and I wanted to use a plotter and I was using this, I'd be very happy with that pattern. I mean, I've seen far, far worse from a plotter. You could, yeah, that looks good. That looks really good. Let's see if the rest of it fits. The only thing that annoys me, and I'd probably let the whole thing go, uh, is just this little hump right here. It just goes just up a little bit. That's great. That makes me real happy. Yes, now we're never hand cutting again. <laughs> um, what system are you using? I'm using a film cut. Oh, I should probably, let me drop something in. Cause if you guys wanna try it, there's a free 30 day trial too. So you guys can let me know how it's working out for you. Um, plotter Depot? No, film cut? What did we call it? What was... Shove it up and shave it. <laughs> that never works out very well for me. Canon. Sorry, let me figure out what this is really quick. I want to say it's... Um, Plotter Depot? No, it's not. Plotter Software. Ah, that's it. 
GoPro. There you go. That's what it was. So what software are you using? Plotter software. That's what it is. So it's called Film Cut. So my other question is, if that lined up, how does everything else line up? That was really good. I wonder how they get their pattern. I want like a confirmation that they actually quality check these on real cars. That's a lot to do, but. Should the tint be up at the top of the window? Uh, yeah. As long as you're not over the edge, like up to the top is great. Over the edge, no. So you need that as close as you can. So I'd say this could be maybe a little bit longer, but it covers everything. It goes just a hair under the seal. It's getting a, it's a little close for my liking, especially in winter time. It's not winter yet, but it, it's like I've got wearing a hat now. <laughs> it's getting, it's getting cold. What time is it? It's 11? Okay. Ooh, this one. There we go. And then we're going to take a look and see how the rest of it turned out. Ooh, you know what? I totally forgot. I need to let my... Uh... Um, my, uh, my younger brother will sometimes keep the live streams on. Ooh, maybe you can just tell them. Daniel, if you're listening, this is not for not a mess message for Daniel Reyna. Um, but Dan <laughs> my younger brother Daniel, uh, if you're listening, uh, you can download the software and try it out for free. So if you want to put it head to head against Tint Tech, I would be forever grateful on that one because they cut out so many cars every day. That looks good. That looks really good. I'm happy. All my edges are covered. Everything turned out nice. The only problem that I have is this slight little, this slight little bump right here, um, which, I mean, somebody said you could just bump it up and then shave it off. Oh, you mean that? Hey, we made that work. How about that? That'd be pretty acceptable. We're going to hand cut it, though, because that's what we usually do. Pretty sure I just peeled it when I rolled it down, though. Because of the way it hit the seal. <laughs> ah, it's so close. Yeah, we're going to hand cut it. But honestly, ugh, not far off at all. That's really good. Point, point for the system, that's good. Okay, so we got long roll there, um, or short roll. We've got Pat over here, wants to know about your plotter. Oh, it is a, uh, so it is a workhorse, because that's what it is, it's a workhorse. It's meant to work every horse every, meant to work every day. Um, this is a $1,600 plotter. It's very budget. Um, and it's definitely missing quite a few things compared to a Roland or Graphtech. Um, it's, it's got no air vents to help suck down the film. Um, it doesn't have the little eye when the film retracts. Um, it doesn't have crosscut, which doesn't really bug me that much. Um, settings, it seems to forget when I restart it, but it's supposed to remember them. Um, it feels kind of cheesy. The rollers are not amazing or anything, but it's, it's getting the job done. I think that's part of the reason it had a little wobble on there. So if you wanted something that was a little bit more accurate. Uh, with this software, I'm annoyed because it does a continuous cut, and right now there's no way to change it from a continuous cut to... Um, cut on pullback. 
So if it, as soon as they enable that feature, which is something they're working on, I'll be, I think the patterns will turn out that much better when they're getting cut on that machine. But yeah, it uh, seems like it's good enough for getting the job done. I mean, it did this. If I was looking to save some money on a system and just get to cutting and whatnot, shoot, you'd be, you'd be totally fine. I'm sure eventually you'll be, you'll be real happy with your machine, everything's going great, and then all of a sudden like, the circuit board will just smoke or something. I don't know. <laughs> Like, like a little Wagner heat gun, it'll just go boom, and then you gotta go get a new one or warranty or whatever, but. Who knows, that might not, that might not ever happen. But if you're looking to save some money, get into it. You don't need one for dozens of cars in a day, which if you're doing that volume, just get a better machine. What are you doing with your life? Um, me and my tint tech did two cars yesterday with the plotter for the most part good except one window the pattern was off we had to redo it have to get used to the weeding um, what software are you trying are you trying film cut too Patrick. Patrick Lachman super chatted ten dollars. <laughs> Yay on the new plotter. <laughs> Thanks for the ten. I appreciate that. How you been? Yeah, new plotter. Um, something that that many people were like, Oh my God, he's getting a plotter. I hated those things. It's true. I do, but it's it's mostly because of the software. <laughs> it all comes down to the software letting me down. I'm totally streaming your stream. <laughs> That's okay. Lack of content. <laughs> Sun Distributing did the same thing the other day. How's the, uh, oh, what was I gonna ask? How's the shop going? Did you, did you decide to go for it? I'm curious. It's hard to believe. I got in this place October? October of last year? So we're like... We're already like a year into it. That's crazy. I'm gonna run out of my lease in a year. Uh, would Film Cut Pro version be better pattern-wise? No, it's worse, don't get it. You might go, but it's Pro, why is it worse? It's because Plotter Depot is annoying. <laughs> Man, there's been so many stupid hoops with this whole plotter situation. You know, you know what they told me? I have the Workhorse 1, and they're like, dude, you got to try the Workhorse 2. I'm like, I just got this set up. What do you mean I got to try the Workhorse 2? <laughs> so that one's like 16. I guess they just got the sequel version. But for whatever reason, I got that one. So like, come on, dude. Shut up. <laughs> but as far as the pro version goes, uh, it's more for vinyl uh, and PPF options. Um, the patterns are different though. So don't get, don't get that one. I don't endorse Film Cut 2. Do you have a waiting room? I do, it's just not very pretty. But things have been a little bit slower, so we can actually geo, 
Gio wants me to redo my showroom. I want to redo my showroom too. It's just so much extra that has to be done and it's expensive. So I haven't done it yet. So I was pretty set on epoxy and I still might do epoxy. Um, but it's just all the extra work. I don't know. What do you do if a tint roll unrolls and gets static? Eh, just work with it. You'll be fine. It's not gonna ruin your it's not gonna ruin your patterns or anything. As soon as you spray it, like unroll it on the car, spray it with some water or whatever, like it's just it kind of discharges anyways, but it'll just be annoying to like pop and whatnot. If anything, you might have put crinkles in it. But that's like, that's the worst. That's the worst that could happen out of that situation. All right. So now we've got a couple of hand cut patterns. So the question is gonna be, how do these line up in comparison? <laughs> that was a fun test. I should try the driver's door as well, because I did cut it out, but I don't know if I feel like tinning it twice again. Maybe we'll leave it. I don't know, it irks me though. It's like, well, one thing that we do here is we make sure things are better. And that was definitely better. So I think it would have been totally fine. Like it would have been totally fine leaving it. Hey! If you do epoxy, make sure you put a lot of sand or grit so it doesn't turn to ice when it gets wet. Oh. Alligator window tint super shattered $5. If you do epoxy, Gator. make sure they put a lot of sand or grit in it so it doesn't turn to ice when it's wet. Thank you, thank you for the five. I will definitely take that into consideration. And by they, I was gonna do it. <laughs> but I don't know if that's a good idea. See, we're, we're like part of it is like extra things for the channel. So not just redoing it, but also kind of like following along. And like, I, I thought about it for a little while. If you're on a, tighter budget and you're trying to decide what to do with your showroom, what are things that are actually not very hard to do? So that's where I was gonna like rip up the carpet, dump a bunch of stuff on the floor, smear it around, call it a day. But I think it's a little bit more than that. But it's, it's in a room that's not high traffic. I told you, I told you it'd go out. Um, it just likes to do it at the worst times. It's like getting a phone call and then you pick up a back window and then that's when somebody calls you. And like the ringtone is perfect from when you're 
getting in the car and like you can't even check your phone. You can't. It's just it's so annoying. That's exactly what happened here. So I got a pattern sitting right there when my audio goes out. Of course it did. Of course it did. Um, how do we fix that? Da, 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 da. Okay, you're gonna hear probably some weird audio for just a second. Link. Hello. 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 There we go. Okay. It's fixed. The audio is not going to be quite as quite as crispy, but it will work. <laughs> Your neck must be strong as hell. See, now everything lines up that much better. I like it. It's not far off though, which is kind of scary. It's back. Thank you for the update. It's okay, guys. He got it back. <laughs> I'd hope so after doing that. What was it? We were talking about epoxy, though. Yeah, so the, uh, my, my dad's shop had epoxy. Um, we moved in there, and then it, it, like, it had grippies on the floor, but they didn't work. They just, they just flat out like really didn't do much. So whenever you're spraying the floor, it's just, it, it turned into a slip and slide. So I've worked at some other ones that were that were better but if it's staying up front that's that's the way I was looking at it it's not much to leave it up there but the more I was looking into like epoxies and costs and stuff it's actually not that cheap to do especially if you start looking into something a little bit nicer so I wanted to do more than just like a dull gray I hope I didn't slide it. I'd be really sad if that happened. So good. Okay, cool. Yay, we're good. That would, that'd be not fun. I thought the whole pattern might have slid when I did that downward squeegee, but we're good. Have you used one of the wide tool pouches? Uh, I've used a number of tool pouches. The like, if you're talking like the, the Ergodyne or something, that pouch, that pouch sucks. There's the Avery pouch. Um, that's that's my favorite. I would, I would if you're gonna get one, it's like. I don't know, 40 to $60. Uh, Sun Distributing, they have them. Can I say that again? Will it work? Oh no, because they click some buttons, so it's not gonna work. Let me click that. 
sun distributing. Now, ah, oh, it's so dumb. Sometimes it works great, sometimes it doesn't work at all. I have to say it like 50 times. Oh no, it's not gonna work because my, uh, my microphone died. So we can't do uh, clever little shortcuts. But they have one. See, that's what happens when oh, the batteries die. Came back to the stream, did the plotter. Well, you're supposed to watch. You're supposed to watch the whole thing. Can't just, can't just skip out. That's a, that's a hard ban right there. No, it worked. It actually worked. It worked really well. Um, there was like a slight little hump. <laughs> Thought the new workhorse was gonna be called the Thoroughbred. You should message them. No, oh, companies always gotta do like version one, version two. I'm just annoyed. It's like getting a brand new phone or computer or something. And then all of a sudden the company, uh, like you like, you don't pay attention a whole lot and then you get one, and then all of a sudden, the company comes out with like the new version right at that point when you bought it, and you're like, what the, what the hell? Now, now I'm sad I even bought it. But what's worse, <laughs> what's worse is, is, uh, is my contact keeps telling me it's it's great and I'm like shut up. I don't want to hear about it I'm, I'm better off being oblivious But you guys remember you guys remember Kevin the the guy in the video that uh, showed us how to set up the first one I guess he's he's got the new one, so they should have a video on it. I think today or something. Or he's gonna be cutting with it today. At least that's what I was told. So we'll have some more info on how much better of a plotter that he's got. What's your opinion on Express? Uh, I don't have much of an opinion. I know the, <laughs> the owner kept spanning my group spamming my group so I blocked them from it. That's about all I know. <laughs> what would it cost to tint my windows on my 18 Civic? Roughly? Roughly what film do you want? And windows. Everything with the windshield or everything without? Except the sunroof. I say everything. Like here it's really common to say complete window tint. And then the windshields are always extra, but to me saying complete means like the full thing. So I always wonder if somebody's gonna get confused and like I, I booked a complete tint job. Yeah, that's what the price, it was complete. Where's my windshield? Oh, that's not part of the complete package. So I always say sides and back. Without the windshield. Hopefully it's not the sport back. Oh, that'd be totally fine. I'd be fine with the sport back. I got the window right there. Um, depends on the film that you go with. Uh, I have three options. Um, a die to carbon and a ceramic. Everything comes with a, with a lifetime warranty. Uh, but the carbon gives you a 50% heat reduction. The ceramic gives you a 75. So I would recommend the carbon, but we're installing Pro Classic right now because this Mercedes doesn't care. <laughs> so it's also a good option. Uh, but you'd be looking at 240, 320, and 450. I should just make that 250. I don't know why I did 240. I don't have a good answer.
What? I need a spare glass, although I don't mind taking it apart. The spare glass makes life easy. So if you get a lot of them, or you get more than a couple of them, I've had that for like a year. $24.99, yeah, but then at checkout, it gets annoying too. Same thing with $2.50, it's like everybody's got 20s. I mean, just carry extra change and then just forget that day or something. Yeah, so with the hatchback, I've bought literally only that back glass because I thought I was gonna have a lot of them and there was enough of a headache. The rest of the car is like super simple. So if you have the back glass out of the car, it just makes the whole car that much easier. So it's a no brainer when you're pricing it and you get one. It's just the nice thing to have, especially cause it's not very expensive to get one. I was thinking of doing the same thing with like the Model 3. But I haven't done it yet. I'm sure that piece of glass would be a little bit more pricey though. It'd look good sitting there. It'd probably reach all the way to the top of those boxes. You guys see the windshield on that, uh... oh, what is it called? The Cybertruck? You guys want to talk about a fun windshield. <laughs> I like how you use it to display the different shades. Yeah, uh, when I was in a smaller space, I used that way more. Um, Cause I didn't have the display boards or anything like that. I have some display boards up front. No plotter today. You just, you missed it. We already used it, we're done. Although, Maybe we should try for the back window, but I already put my glass aid on there, man. <laughs> we could do court, you know, that would be okay. We could do quarters and we could do the back window. We're moving along at a pretty reasonable pace here. Let's check out a back window. What's the most difficult car to tint? I get asked that a lot. Old cars, just old cars, old cars, old trucks. They're annoying. I don't want to ever see them again. Why do you put tape on the top of the door panel? Because I'm just like doing unnecessary things. It's, it's, a... we started with carpet shield. Um, carpet shield doesn't really stick super well to all the door panels, but it sticks to a fair amount of them. But then I found that tuck tape sticks to basically all door panels. So it's a, got a really nice adhesive to it. So it's easy for me to just put a strip here and then carpet shield just <laughs> sticks right on. I don't have to try and tuck it. I don't have to do anything like that. So, um, but it would be smart to get some type of uh, like a light plastic weatherproof covering, wrap it around the sides and then just tape the top. It was just always kind of annoying to try and line up tape with the panel. And so it's, it's just, this is kind of just a different type of solution for it. It's a little less irritating to do, that's all. It's kind of wasteful, but hey. Whatever. VW Beetle? Yeah, that's not fun either. I finally tried one last week. Did the back glass about four times. I finally got it. Nice job. That's awesome. A little trick for that one too is Dotrix at the top because it's got a big dot matrix border. So if you didn't want to just tint the whole way up, kind of like I, uh, I don't know. I've showed Datrix a couple of times. But if you wanted to make it like a little bit easier for yourself, you could get Datrix, put Datrix up there, black out the dots and, and call it a day. But yeah, it's a, it's a big pain in the ass back window. I don't think I've had one in, in literally years. I just don't get them. Which means that I'll probably get one next week. <laughs> Thank you.
Those two pieces extra of tint. Those two pieces cut extra on the tint. Oh, oh, these little guys? Oh. Sorry. <laughs> now I'm gonna just leave them there longer. I didn't even notice them. They're just resting, they're fine. Look at that, we're just gonna leave them there. What water tank do you use? I use a tank keg. Uh, I'm using the three gallon, I have the five gallon, um, but just Google tint keg and you'll find them. They're on Sun Distributing's website. They upgrade the fittings, they upgrade the hoses. They're super awesome sprayer systems. Um, when doing an H pattern, how do you decide where the horizontal anchor? Uh, do the center. You, the point is just to get an, as even on top and bottom as you can to make it easier for yourself. So there's very few windows where it won't be a 50-50. So when we lay the film on here, this looks like the center to me, so we'll just do it there. Gotta remember what the goal is. The goal, the goal is to shrink. So you wanna make things as easy on yourself as you can. So just a 50-50 split usually makes things, you know, even amount of shrinking on the top, even amount of shrinking at the bottom. This is these two pieces right now. They're resting on the back side of the glass right now. <laughs> Just gonna leave them there. Uh, in PA, is that Pennsylvania? Is that what that one is? We have front side windows, rear side windows. Is legally seventy. Is it even dark? Can you go darker? Is it worth it? I, in your state, I don't know. Michigan state law is. Uh, Nothing on the front doors, except the top four inches. Same thing with the windshield, uh, unless you have a doctor's note. So it's worth it for people here. It just depends on who's getting it. If you have yearly inspections, you have to figure out a way to deal with that too. We don't have yearly inspections, not yet anyways. Maybe we will someday. I don't even do an H pattern. I just do the middle line and the corners float. I find it way easier. So that's a good point. I do something similar. I'll still like make the H pattern, but I don't tack it very hard on the sides at all. And I'll lift them off. I kind of do it as a way to help organize everything in the very beginning and then kind of lighten up. I've explained that a few times. but it's definitely easier to explain when I'm doing it. But yeah, like, <laughs> especially in the beginning, a lot of people get confused. I'm jealous of the states that can go as dark as they want. There are none. I mean, Michigan is you can go as dark as you want on the back. So I guess we have an advantage there on sedans because I'm more surprised that a state like Florida has restrictions on sedans on the back. Like you literally could get pulled over and then, sorry, the rear of your vehicle is too dark. That to me is ridiculous, especially when SUVs can be in a completely different category. Matt is so cool, he's my friend. <laughs> How you doing, Nick? You're probably happy because you're going to Florida. Oh, see, yeah. So we'll we'll cut this out on the plotter, um, and then we'll talk about that, I guess, when we get to it. But 
when when you're shrinking a back window um, and you like fix down, you do like a hard H pattern. And what I mean by that is like you anchor the center and then you anchor the sides. Well, you don't want to take away all this material from being shrunk. It's just it's too much. So just letting it float means that you have more space to work with. So I'll just do this lightly and then kind of finesse it as I go up. Palm trees upcoming, sounds nice. But we'll put the roll back on the on the plotter. We'll film cut some uh, some back window and quarters. Quarters, I have no concerns about. If they can't get these right, then. I don't know, these are super easy to, to cut out. Um, and the back window, um, it's got this little dip here, but again, it's pretty easy cut out, so nothing crazy there. Time is it? 11.44. Yep, we're doing great. Easy peasy. Oh, we didn't even shrink this one. Look at that, that's super flat. So let's grab this little guy. Florida and Georgia are nice to so feel the humidity. Yeah, it's dumb humid down there. We get plenty of humidity up here too, come summertime. But we had a really nice month. This past month, the weather has been really nice. But that's quickly gonna go, it's gonna go colder. So unless you really like cold fall weather, it gets, gets gray. It's rainy, a lot of overcast, sad. What the heck, how do you do that? Ready for fall, bought a new sweater. <laughs> we do have seasonal weather here, or uh, seasonal seasonal clothing, so that's nice. So if you like sweaters, hoodies, all that. I like hoodies. Hoodies are comfy. So being able to go outside and wear hoodies, it's nice. Just when you get locked away for months on end, it's like, what do I do? Did we scream? No, we didn't. I'm doing things like way out of order for no good reason. But that'll be fine. We'll still get a good job out of this.
Oh, it's so quiet here. We don't even have, <laughs> we don't even have uh, crickets right now. They're all dead. It's like dumb quiet here. I don't, I've never worked in any place this quiet before. My friend thought tint was installed on the exterior. You should visit the comment sections of a lot of my videos that went bigger. <laughs> but like, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to go on the inside. Like people only like watch a couple minutes of a video and then decide to leave a comment. It's like, why are you tinting both sides? Why did you just tint the outside? It's supposed to go on the inside. PPL dumb. <laughs> oh, that's funny. PPL dumb. But with the uh, with the most recent Walmart video just going crazy. Oh my god, that was that was a lot of fun comments. There were so many people that were defending, that, that were just like defending black magic. And it was hilarious to see. Like even some people that have been tinning, they're like, I've been tinning for 30 years. You're supposed to let it dry. It's like, I know I didn't show it in the video, but I actually did. But I know what they're talking about. Well, long, not a long time ago, but it was way more common like five plus years ago when you would tint windows and then the glue would haze up. It doesn't really happen much anymore. And it I don't think I've ever seen it happen. I don't think I've ever seen that happen with nano ceramic and dyed films. Because like the the Asian glues, they just don't do it. And that's where most of these films are coming from. It's like South Korea, China, not as much China, uh, not really for the professional stuff, but like it's very much like a, an Asian technology. And they have a particular, they have a particular feel for them, like to them, where they're a little bit more rubbery and stuff. So it's like, if you really just tried a bunch of films, <laughs> you know what, <laughs> you know what it's like. People are like, you're supposed to let it dry for two days. <laughs> it's like, mm, one, it's just, it's not as much of a thing. And even if it was, even if it was still a, more of a thing, the type of haze that you're talking about is not consistent. That was such an even haze. It's a material haze. It's not the glue. It's not the water in between the film and the glass. And notice how it was just when I pulled the car outside. It wasn't beforehand. It's just, it was purely sun. But, hey, it was fun. For some reason, the black magic didn't cut so easily with the blade. Um, it seemed to go like fine, like it shrunk okay. At least the one I was messing with, it shrunk okay. Um, it installed okay. Like there's no, with a lot of them too. Like they're they're okay enough where they'll act and work like, you know, pretty much any other film within reason. We're 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 only shrinking it a very little bit for a door like that. So we didn't even have to do a lot. But for carbon and ceramic, the question is always, are they gonna be hazy? And how, how long are they gonna last? I don't think I ever saw an update video on the eBay tent. No, cause I, I pulled it off pretty quickly. It didn't warrant, there, there was no way for me to make it until follow-up video. There wasn't enough there.
like it was it was a real interesting thing to cover for one major video. It's hey, I bought this film off of eBay. Okay. And it's supposed to change from 70 to 20. Whoa, that's different. I've never seen that before. Not like that. And then it had the added boasting factor of heat rejection. So it gave me a lot to do in a video. But if I just want to give an update on like, hey, this is a transition film. I, I can almost guarantee you that everybody that watched the first video is not watching the update. <laughs> <laughs> they're not subscribed for it. Only a handful of people are going to be watching for it. It's just, it, it's not going to hit the same way. So something like that, it would just take me too long to make. So I never made a follow up to it. But when it got, I did make a community post with a lot of pictures and stuff. So you could see an update on the community tab if you wanted to hear more about it. But same thing with like the hazy Walmart film. Like they're like, you should have made a follow-up video, and it's like, I understand. But like, hi, here's the window. Oh look, it still looks like milk. And then I'd have people arguing with me like, oh, it's the solution that you used, which was black magic solution. Oh, you used too much solution. No. Oh, you did it wrong. <laughs> okay, fine. Because every other person that gets this stuff is gonna have a perfect result. But the guy that does it for a living, he did it wrong. All right, whatever. <laughs> Just want to be contrarians. So I, I just, we have other stuff to do. I got work to do. How normal is it for the ceramic side window to be filled with clear bubbles? My buddy has a shop installed his and his side windows had a ton of bubbles. So if, if your windows had just been tinted, you're going to see water pockets. But then within a day, two days, winter time, three, four, five days, up to a week at the most, um, once it, it all looks even, if you still have speckles, white, white, air bubbles and stuff like that, that's never gonna go away. So everybody's gonna have uh, like water blisters, water pockets, that's all normal because there's water. And when I squeegee all this stuff out, there's still like a fine layer of water sitting in between the film and the glass. So you just have to let it dry for a little bit, but there's a lot of tinners that try and cover up mistakes by saying, just let it dry. <laughs> so give it a few days. If you see lots of like white problems with it, then, then that's a, those aren't gonna go away. Air bubbles, dirt specks, creases, lines. That doesn't go away. It doesn't magically get darker afterwards. There really isn't, there's no magic with tint. Like ceramic is, is kind of magical in the heat reduction that you get. That's cool. Um, but there's no magic with, uh, like with window tint. Like you get a good job, cool, it looks good. It's not gonna magically get darker. Ceramic doesn't magically look darker than carbon. It's polyester coloring, and some glue. But there's so much marketing around it that, that makes some of this all seem pretty magical, but it's really not. It, there's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Sad, but that is what it is. Oh, it's just weird because I noticed the uh, issues won't were ones installed, at least not as many. Well, if it's been a couple of days and you still see a bunch of like problems with it, then they're probably not gonna go away. It's a ton of marketing. Yeah, there is a lot of marketing because I mean, 
also me as an installer, like I want there to be more with the ceramic than there actually is. But the, the cold hard fact is, is there more optical clarity? No. But when you get a higher dollar ceramic, uh, it's higher optical clarity than other ceramics, if, if that makes sense. So like when you're paying for like a quality, like when you're paying for a film in the ceramic range, you're paying for at least a more optically clear ceramic. But the the way that all the displays are is like dyed versus carbon versus ceramic. And like the main difference between all those um, is going to be heat rejection. So it's super comfortable to drive around with. Like there's no doubts there. But there's like a lot of selling points, which I wish there were, that you can kind of say, but it's not, it's not completely accurate. So is it gonna keep your car cooler? Mm, no, your car's a metal box, but it will, like, it's more comfortable because when you're driving around, you have all the sun coming right through your glass. So when you're driving around, it absorbs that sun and then it radiates off of the glass, so you never feel it, and it never enters your car. So yes, it does, but no, it doesn't. If you leave your car sitting out in a parking lot on a hot day, and you go out to your car, it's still gonna be hot. It's a metal box. There's no way around it. And most of your car's metal. But, kind of like putting up one of those uh, reflective shields, um, ceramic has like a similar effect. It's not quite the same as putting up a mirror, uh, but it is, it's got a similar effect where like it keeps heat off of certain areas and especially when you're driving because if even with good air conditioning, if you're driving around on a hot day, that sun's coming through the glass, sitting there in traffic, one side of your body is heating up, the other side is staying cold. And it like, man, that gives me a headache. So tinning it helps gives you some shade, but adding the uh, carbon or ceramic, that helps keep that actual heat off your skin too. So it gets, gets even better. Wow, what is up with this? There we go, I think. These seals, man, they're not, they're tight, but they're not. I don't know how to describe them. They're just kind of annoying. Sides are totally fine. Bottom ones, a little annoying. Big selling point, use it for shade. Well, yeah, for sure. But when you're talking about the difference between like a regular film and uh, one of the more high performance films or however you wanna dress it up. Hi, saying high performance is nice, but is easier on the eyes while driving. Yep, yep, that's huge, for sure. But you can get that with any of the films. Or at least any of the films that I saw. So like now, I think it's like, we're like 60, like 60s outside. So, you know, heat rejection isn't at the forefront of everybody's mind right now. I wish it was, but you know, some people are trying to stay warm. <laughs> All right, roll downs, good. Have you used the Tint Depot tint? Um, I've used some of it, um, but I know what it all is, so I can vouch for it being good.
they just have special branding. They're, they're like not allowed to sell it under what it's supposed to be, but it, it is actually good film. They're, they're part of a, part of a bigger, bigger company. Okay, um, well, we have this here. Oh, and little difference here. This catch basket doesn't have like the push rods. So it's been very weird. <laughs> I keep wanting to like shove it, this back in there, load a roll and then bring out the catch basket, but I can't do that. So this is 20, we did five um, on the back. So we're gonna take this roll and then we're gonna line it up. Cut out some film. I've been loading a plotter this way for so long um, that I, I really like doing it better this way than sit, standing on the, like the back side of a plotter. Doing things this way is a little bit easier for me to do. Let me drag this roller over here. And then let's roll this back a little bit. Keep some tension. Also, this is opposite. When you push it down, it locks it. On um, the graph text, when you pull it up, that locks it. Pushing it down, that's just weird. But let's move this over. Yeah, it has no way to size it up. You, I think you have to always do this manually. You have to go over, you have to set your like enter point, and then you're okay to go. What's the form to post pictures? Okay, let me get you. Uh, the group is called Window Tint Stuff. All right. These are my screens. Where's film cut? There we go. So now we have 36 inch roll, so we can say it's 35 to be on the safe side. We can get rid of this pattern. Um, they should have a back window with the quarters. No, they don't. Really? Oh, okay. Well, that's a very common. Oh, it's because it's not going to fit. Oh, shh. Shoot, really? Shut up. I don't think these these are gonna fit. No! Oh, it's so close. That's why they don't have it. Look at how close that is. So I put 35, 36, ooh. I think we'll squeak by on a 36. So I guess we'll just see where we cut on this. It's gonna be it's gonna be real close. I just did 35 to be safe. Yeah, that that should be fine. Okay. And now let's click. Oh, there it goes. We gotta speed this up. Aha! Look at that, just barely. Yeah, see that wave here? It, as it's cutting into the film, it's, there's like this little wave here. So if it was only like pull cutting or something in one direction, I think it'd be better. Also, that was a, a decent gap right there. So I could have gotten these ones a little bit closer. That's fine. We're doing it. It'll all work. I didn't have any major mistakes. Look at that. is extra noise. Sweet.
Mine does that on the pole and still does that. No, don't ruin that for me. Ah, oh, that's no good. I was hoping that would fix it. So this is not near as big of a table as I'd like. I was setting up the cut depth for the plotter. Uh, you could watch it. We did the whole thing live. It was fine. Um, we had some mistakes. We ripped through probably about 20 feet of film and then I ended up switching to a different blade entirely and then kind of took what I learned initially and then we set up the next one really, really quick. But yeah, it went fine. <laughs> about, as, about as much as you can expect from any first plotter setup. I'd be able to set up a new machine much quicker um, the second time around. I can't see it. There we go. So for a back window, um, typically I'll just cut and weed the patterns um, but for a back window, there's more shrinking involved. So it's a good idea, unless you're using like Lumar, something that's, I used to do it that way with Lumar. Um, leave the border on put it on the glass and then shrink it and then peel that edge. Cause as you get to the edges, you'll have some messiness. But, hey look, we didn't need to buy glass aid. We just had to buy $1,600 machine. Oh, these cuts. Oh, these have me worried. I will be very sad person if this doesn't line up right. <laughs> but it's hard to tell. So on a back window especially, um, you can sit here and try and line everything up to your edges or you just cut, shrink, and go. And then cross your fingers that it all lined up. So if we have to do this twice, I'm not gonna be super happy about it. But the doors look good. So back window, back window should be similar, right? Um, where's my windows here? There's this one, there's this one, and then that one. All right, so back to the center. Um, as far as where to find, like where to anchor it in the middle, like literally, that's what I did. I did the center and then I did this tack on the side. Um, but when I go, it, it's really to like kind of organize this stuff up and down. And then when I go to shrink it, I'll sometimes only go so far. And then I'll like sometimes pick it up, put a little air underneath it. So I have all the width. You're doing a banner for the front? No, that's got quarters on it. It was just extra material. What do you think about buying AutoZone tint? Um, it's fun to play around with, but I wouldn't take it seriously. Like, if you're just looking to tint a couple of doors on like your own personal vehicle, that's kind of what it's there for. Um, and if you want to get something and just start playing around with tint, um, it's it's a great option to at least like go get some stuff today and play around with it. But I would definitely suggest going to an actual tint website and ordering some bigger rolls if you're looking into getting into it as like a profession or a professional hobby. It'll save you, it'll save you a lot of money because those rolls, believe it or not, you're actually wasting a lot of money on those rolls. You're buying them $20 at a time, which doesn't sound like much, but now take that $20 
by however many feet and figure out how much that is for a hundred foot roll in that size. So a good grade of film, like like GeoShield, or sorry, yeah, I should say GeoShield Pro Classic, because that's like one of the only ones I'll talk about pricing. That'll be like a hundred-ish dollars for like a 24 inch roll. You're gonna be spending way more money on AutoZone film than you will even on GeoShield, to put it into some perspective. So all those films on like Amazon, eBay, it's like you get to buy them 20 feet at a time, but man, they're, they're, they're making their margins. They just carry a not so great film and then charge a premium for it, but you're only buying it a small portion at a time. So, hey, it is what it is. What temp do you have your heat gun at? I have it on all the way, all the time. Turn it all the way up. What tool do you recommend to work around third brake lights? Uh, we actually have to grab a couple. Good question. Um, so something for this bottom edge, this is a good one. This is called the tail fin, um, side swipe, and then bulldozer. These are, these are great. So if you get anything, bulldozer, um, but I get both of these, and then this is like an optional third. It's nice to have. Okay. So, that was fun. Some people peel this in a really scary way. I don't like to peel it in a scary way, uh, especially if I know this may have a snag in it somewhere. Uh, so, you can just... Like, I've seen, basically, you pull the whole liner with this attached to it, and it basically just, as long as everything weeds perfectly, you'll be totally fine. But as soon as you have a catch, you could rip through the entire film. Ooh, we would have been okay. That went really nice. Dang, dude, I got that plotter so dialed in now. No snags. So when you get to the edges, I'll still like to reheat them up, knock everything down, but what was I gonna say? But oh yeah, but the liner, the liner on this actually doesn't seem to curl much at all. Look at that. I'm heating right up to it. Liner's still taking the heat. It's not like fraying, burning, and like peeling back pretty pretty horribly. So I could probably comfortably peel it beforehand, put it on the glass, and then shrink it. We could try that one time. That'd probably be totally fine. How much do I need to start tinting? It depends on how much you want to invest. Um, there's not a lot that you need. The bulk of your money is going to go into to film. Um, you could have a couple hundred dollars in tools and basically have everything. No! Do we, do we have to wake it up? No, he's gotta be on? That's unusual. Oh, this one's over here. There we go. So a couple hundred dollars in tools and then like a roll of film. Get a roll of film and a heat gun. There we go. No sound. I think it's just quiet in here. We gotta pull out these uh, headrests if we can. Oh, I already did this. I just didn't take him out. Yes! 
Thank you. Mercedes. Thank you for making my life easier. Just one push button. How many how many years have you been using GeoShield? Not too long. Um a couple years, I think. I've used them in the past. But I, I was using Avery, and then not too long after, I ended up switching to Geo, and that was mostly because of their carbon. I know where it comes from, and I know their track record, so those were some convincing reasons to switch. I know this is a newbie question, but what's the purpose of shrinking tint? Oh, it's okay. When it's framed like that, it's hard to ignore. Um, so the glass is curved and the film is flat and you need that film to line up uh, or to lay flat on the glass. So that's why you shrink it. You're just forming it. It's really, people say shrinking, um, but you're really forming it to the glass. But you're doing that by shrinking. Sure why my iPad connected to an echo. To oh, oh, okay. That's why you didn't have sound. It's okay. We lost sound earlier. I switched mics though. Using spool. <laughs> it always says spool. It doesn't say expel. It says spool. I have to listen to it because like whenever somebody goes like, hey, have you used uh, this film compared to Spool? I'm always like, wait, what? And your issues of geofilm, is there ever issues of geofilm during the years that you've used that? No, not yet. On the carbon, oh, you know what? On the carbon earlier on, uh, one of the reasons why I flipped through a bunch of squeegees was because with a flat out, I was starting to get little hairline scratches here and there on it, and I didn't like that at all. So I started using some softer squeegees, some different ones, and uh, and really the hybrid is kind of like my favorite to use, but I didn't have uh, any of those problems with the other ones. It's a little warm. So like the 35 ceramic, I think is a little bit, a little bit too warm, but that just kind of is what it is. Um, the Pro Classic and the Pro Nano, they're both kind of a pain to remove. So that's, that's not super fun, but those are like, those are small things. There's always some stuff you're not going to like about it, but I haven't had any film failures. Um, that would be like a huge red flag if I had like a bubbly window or something. So I don't think I've been using it long enough to encounter something like that necessarily, but that would be like, I'd probably start stop using it that day. But. Is it gonna fit? Film cut back window. Is this gonna work? I don't know. Cone tip or fan tip? I have a cone tip, but I'd like to try a fan tip again. The fan tip has a really nice spray, but if you have anything in your tank, which I did when I first started using it, 
uh, it got clogged up. Um, and then I took like a piece of copper wire and tried to knock whatever was in there out. And then I screwed up the whole fan tip and I haven't used one since. So it was my bad, but I liked it for the short while that I had it. Okay. That side's fine. It's fine. Easy money. <laughs> Tim Pro, what'd you think about that post? <laughs> Somebody in there asked what, what vehicles. <laughs> Doesn't matter, they're all easy money. Um, when tinting a windshield uh, that is dot matrix, you know, top stitches that affect the tint, how does it stick? Um, no. Dot matrix are, are normal. Any decent tint. Uh, it's not going to stick to the dots in a way that you're going to like, but it's not going to mess it up. Basically every window has those dots around it. So if we only tinted for windows that didn't have it, we'd have a very small list of vehicles that we could tint. So something like a tail fin, this is really good for a tighter area that you have to, uh, and you need that like fine point to it. So the stroke doctor, or sorry, the side swipe is good at the top portion, not so much in there. And the bulldozer, where's that? This guy, this guy can get down here just fine too. So it's okay for like most of it. I have enough space here, but this is kind of like a good in between all of that. So good for getting in tighter corners and spots and edges and stuff. You must be a pro with putting on phone screen protectors. <laughs> no, not quite as good as you might think. My wife did a really nice job. I happened to do mine this time though, but only because I was watching her. It's a different, it's a different process. Uh, how does a warranty work from GeoShield? Do you offer warranty personally? Yeah, so if they have any issues, I take care of them. Um, and then if I were to have a film failure, I'd be hitting GeoShield up, and then they would count me for the, uh, for the failure. So they basically cover the costs of, of what happened. So um, it turns into a problem real quick though um, when companies start putting out bad film. So no company wants to do that because it's an incredible liability. You lose tons of clients and you just you ruin tons of reputations and then nobody trusts you in the industry anymore. So, if you're, for example, if I'm ordering Pro Classic and then all of a sudden I have like a car come back with a bubbly back window, oh, that's really unusual. Then you move on with your day and then you have another one come back. Bubbly window, same film, oh, oh shoot. Think of how many other cars that are out there that are probably gonna do the same thing now. It's just an incredibly expensive problem. So, Geo, <laughs> they're gonna take care of that. <laughs> or <laughs> there's gonna be hell to pay, man. Because that, that's what that warranty is though. That's what it covers is, is incidental stuff like that. So, some companies will only comp you on like film. Some will comp you for labor and film. So every one of them's gonna be different, but there's gonna be some sort of positive resolution out of it or I am hop skipping and jumping somewhere else real quick. You just can't have that. Because the clients, as far as they know, they think that you installed a bad film like a cheap film or something. Ooh. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, I'm so happy. I got this thing so dialed in now. Hell yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, like what happened with the ASWF, but they took care of the invoice 100%. Yeah, you know, they did the same thing with us. That's probably the only positive thing that I have to say about them, but man, they did not. They did not have their 
uh, their story straight on that at all. So we had the we had a gigantic UV bloom problem with that film, and uh, and it was like different people in the comp company were just basically like making stuff up. It like sounded like everybody knew exactly what happened, and then nobody nobody took care of it. Uh, does labor, film, and comp provide? Talk to Geo um, specifically about it, but uh, it wouldn't. It would be for pretty much any any company ordering their film. Um, I'm looking at these to see which way I could shrink them, if at all. I put them all sideways, so I'd be shrinking this way. So I kind of like pinched myself into a corner where like I tilted them, and they should be fine without. Uh, or I, I really don't have an opportunity to shrink these without messing them up, so we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna lay them in there and see how they work. Your plotter's so dialed in, you're making my machine look bad. Bro, you're getting the sequel. You're getting the workhorse too, what do you care? <laughs> You're one upping me already. Oh, it's so funny. I was talking to uh to Plotter Depot and they're like the workhorse 2 is amazing. I'm like, "Why do I have the workhorse 1?" <laughs> and they're like, "Kevin's getting the workhorse 2." I'm like, "Damn it." <laughs> Let me know how it goes. But this is cool. This shows you how much you can refine your own plotter then, if you're using the, the one. It apparently can be one hell of a perfect cutting machine. I think it made a little wobble for us on the driver's door though. So I, like, it, like I said a few times, I still don't like the way that, that it's weeble wobbling as it's, as it's cutting. But we may not be able to do anything about that. I'd say these are a little big, not by much, but these were like, you know, I appreciated that these were bigger, but what was my problem with it? I don't know, is this a gasket one? Yeah, this is, okay, so they could have gone farther down. I just couldn't get that little edge to pop up. No, these are fine. Sorry, I'm not trying to be overly critical about them. I just thought this gasket wasn't a pullback one for a minute, so I thought they were a little big for what they were. What's the underlying reason for the wobble? It's cheap. Like, um, so what's happening, I, I can't say 100%. I'd have to cut the patterns on one plotter and then cut them out on another plotter to really be sure, but it's just kind of like, you can kind of see it bunch up as it's pushing material cutting this way. And then as it's pulling it that way, like the material is kind of doing a little walk on itself. So it makes sense that maybe that's caused a couple of little issues for me um, that where I would naturally want to blame the patterns, um, but it, it might more so be the, the plotter itself. So it makes sense. Like, let's say you, I, I don't know much about this world, but like w with, with a lot of fine differences. So like I've seen videos of like 3D printer qualities where like the more expensive 3D printer you get, the more fine the prints are gonna be. Similar with this, I, I'm guessing the cuts are just gonna be that much better when you get a machine with more refined parts and some little extra features and stuff like that. So, makes sense. But this is kind of a newer world for me messing around with one of these ones. One of these machines specifically. So I'd have to, like it's an expensive thing. I'd have to like request some from a graph tech and then get one car and then install it on one, install it on the other and then blah, 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 blah. So who knows? I saw a little 
little air pocket right there. Back window worked out great though. Back window, quarters, all great. Front door, um, as far as I know, that, that would have been fine. Is it the tension on the rollers? That could be another thing. I, I, I adjusted them a little bit. I don't know exactly what's gonna make them work that much better, but what I see is we don't have any rollers anywhere else. There's just one roller on the side here, one roller on the side here, and there's no air to lock down the center. So as it's pushing the material back and forth, it's got to do it in a gap that's like, you know, when this thing is down, like it's, it's down. So it's, it's just putting pressure against it all. So it makes sense that there would be a little wobble there. I'm hoping, because it's a continuous cut right now, what I'm hoping is that we can change that up in the future with a software update where we could do like a pull and maybe that'll fix it, but we'll see. Looks like 5% but what line? Oh yeah, we're doing, we're doing five on the back, uh, 20 on the front, we're doing Pro Classic. Um, did you cut the windows by yourself or the plotter? So we cut out one, uh, one off the plotter for the uh, front passenger door and it worked out pretty well. And then we cut out the back quarters and the back window. So I ended up leaving a hand cut window on the front because it's kind of like my staple. <laughs> but it was a really good pattern. I give it, I give it a lot of credit. Okay, so this, this is what I was having trouble with earlier is there's a little gasket here and you can pull this back just a little bit and slide this tint down out of your way, tuck it up there, maneuver it where it's gotta go. But all my edges are covered, yay. That's good, it's good stuff. I even put glass aid on it. I didn't have to use it. Look at that. I didn't on the quarters, but I did on the back. I wish I could have shrunk them though, just a little bit. <laughs> that was how I oriented them though. What's better, ceramic or regular tint? Ceramic gives you more but it costs more. I like ceramic better. So I'm gonna say ceramic. <laughs> it's like, would you like more horsepower with your car or not as much horsepower with your car? They'll both get you down the road. Um, what tint template program? We're using one called Film Cut. You can find it at Plotter Depot. I've got a free 30 day trial. So if you guys have a plotter and you have, and you're using something already, like, and you wanna try this stuff out, then please do. Because I only know the cars that it fits on the ones that I'm using it on. I would love to know if it actually works on more. Because then I can actually start recommending it. Right now it's just kind of in a personal trial phase where, you know, I'm, I got to tint cars live. So we'll find out if it's good or not together, but if you guys can help speed up the process, that would be much appreciated. So we're pretty much, I got a little bit of touch up to do, but we're pretty much done. It's 1230, it's nice. I guess I could have installed a couple more plotted patterns. <laughs> I cut out the driver's door, but I have it installed, so we're not gonna do that. But yeah, it was fine. Back window turned out good. Um, I would have made one little difference. So this is just a personal difference, and I don't, 
I don't blame them for doing this. Makes it a little more challenging to line up. But so on this, you see this edge right here? How this just kind of juts down? They give you plenty of space on the inside of this window to kind of just go up. So you don't have to have such an abrupt cut. And with the overlap that they had on the sides, you could have just like, eh, it would have been fine to just smooth this out a little bit more. It, it just gives you a little bit back and forth wiggle room in case you need it. Otherwise, you got to make sure that thing is like almost dead center. But the sides had plenty of room on the, on the back. Uh, the quarters were maybe like slightly big. Uh, but it all worked. No gaps. That's the most important thing. So yeah, these were good. So we could have like matte verified patterns and then I could put my stamp on like one of the windows or <laughs> the passenger front door in the back three. <laughs> Actually, that's interesting. Can we do that? Matt tried these. He said they were good. And then if you cut them out and if they're not good, you can come yell at me. That sounds like a plan. We're gonna buy that short squeeze. What's that? Would you recommend 10% on the back windows and 15 on the front windows? Um, there's, eh, yeah, there'd be a decent difference between 10 and 15. It's kind of harder to find like a 10%. Most go from like 15 to five. Um, but if you can find it, yeah, that'd be cool. It's definitely darker. You could have cut, Matt cut my car and me verify them. Or you could have you cut them and then I can verify it. <laughs> Do you ever get up and say to yourself, I'm bad? No. I get up and go, man, I want to sleep in more. <laughs> I recommend, I'm, re I'm, I'm getting a yellow turbo, which do you recommend? I actually recommend this one. Don't get the yellow turbo, get the fusion turbos. Uh, pink or green, I like the pink a lot. This is the best. I'm not a turbo fan. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Ugh. Look, I got the turbo. <laughs> I got the turbo right here. So. I bought this because I thought it was funny. I wonder if it'll let me show you guys. Let me turn this heat cut off for a second. So what I hate is, um, actually the owner of Sun Distributing can back this up for me. Um, this edge is kind of rough on the turbos and there's some marring and stuff along the whole thing. So whenever I, I used one of these, they'll generally leave like some soft streaks behind. So the fusion turbos though, they're just newer molds. They're newer pieces anyways. And man, it's clean. So I was never a turbo fan. Fusion turbos though are awesome. So don't get a yellow turbo, get a fusion one. So the pink or the green, they're, they're similar. I generally will go for the pink one. They have like a huge amount of colors, like this, all these right here. Those are all fusion turbos. I have all the colors. Um, I don't use anything other than like the pink ones. Yellow turbos have been the staple for a long, long time. And I've hated them always. I always feel like I have to re-clean every time I use them. It's like, cause you know, when you put some wear into squeegee, it starts leaving little trails behind. And then I like want to re-squeegee it. That's how it's always been with the turbo until I started using those ones.
What's the best? What's the best squeegee for extracting water out during a windshield? Soft or harder? Uh, well, a harder squeegee is just going to get out more water because it's putting more pressure. I think the hybrid has been like one of the best in-betweens. It's like soft enough, but it gets out a ton of water. It, the material is great. Highly, highly recommend the hybrid. The flat out has been another one that's on the harder side. That's a really good one. But I, uh, I don't, I don't know. I've had some issues with the flat out, depending on the film that I'm using. Like on the carbon, sometimes I've had a couple of little hairline scratches and stuff. So at the time I was using Avery and I didn't have a single problem with it while using Avery, at least that I ever noticed. But, and I don't want that to sound like the scratch coat is like worse or something. Um, but maybe it is a little bit softer on, on the C2 versus some of the other ones. But hybrid, hybrids, hybrids my favorite. Used the hybrid on one car, now it's leaving streaks. That's always a bummer. It probably happened from when you ran it over the top. It's happened to me. Um, so, I don't know if you wanna do this for your setup, but some people have recommended like a 2000 grit sandpaper. Um, and then just kinda like, uh, who was it? Jose in my group, he posted a router setup. But I thought this was kind of a nifty little setup here. Um, it's a little bit, it's a little bit more extreme, I guess, because it's like, it's a whole little station here, but let me show you. So I wanted a way to just like, because there's a lot of good material here. I put out a video on the channel too. And what this is, is you can use just a regular vise, and then these brackets um, are just magnetic brackets. Um, links to these are in the video that I made uh, on the channel. But you, I found both of these, so the vice was like 40 bucks, 40, 45 or something, and the brackets were like another like 10 to 12. But basically what I do is I'll line up this blade uh, just a little bit over, and then I'll clamp this down, and then I'll take uh, my knife and just do one of these. Oh. I guess that didn't work out quite as well that time. Oh wow, that is just, sorry, I haven't done this in a minute. There, that's better, that's what it should look like. See, now we're getting the whole thing. So you just kinda like shave off the whole edge of the, the blade and now you can use this again without having to throw it out. So like a sandpaper or something like that so now when we take it back over here, hopefully. Yay, it's all nice and clean. So, it's a way to keep them longer. Cause yeah, it's like a $17 blade. <laughs> the, the hybrids are expensive. Turbo is overrated, crush on the other hand. I got one. I, I, you can also, instead of using, I use these, that's what I use that for a long time. Turbos are great. Um, you can also take one of your main squeegees and, uh, and just chop it down, especially after you use it for a little while. Instead of just throwing them out, you can just chop them down into quarter window squeegees. But yeah, it's a little bit more of a, of like a setup to do something like that. Um, cause I understand not everybody's gonna, I mean, a lot of car shops, they have a vice, but not everybody's gonna want to do that. You could also take a vice and put like flat rulers and then do it that way too. Like there's a number of ways you could do it. You don't have to go as crazy as that. All right. Well, 
we're pretty much at the end then. So there you have it. We did. Why did we have this on? We turned this on for like a specific reason and I totally forgot why. So whoever said I think the car's still on. Whoops. Anyways, uh, let's shout out some super chats here really quick. Plan to get Geo for my own window tinting business? Good, you'll be happy. I think. Use a little more soap. Oh, that's a good one. So, Geo, if you've used other films, Geo can be a little bit sticky on the Pro Classic. Um, I'll take these, I'll do about a quarter of Dawn, and then I'll do about three quarters the ratio, about three quarters baby shampoo. That helps a lot. Helps a lot to get your film to slide around. Is the pink soft? Uh, the pink is one of the softer ones. But even soft squeegees, they'll still get like enough water out. So it's, man, how do I say this? So like even when I was using the clear crush, the clear crush would, would leave, I think, a little bit more water than I like. But I could use the clear crush even, squeegee out all my windows, middle of winter, and then it would take I don't know, four or five days to still dry out and then everything would be fine. So that's like kind of taking the softest squeegee. They're, they'll pretty much all get the job done one way or another. And then they'll, uh, they'll dry out fast enough, especially in warmer weather. What would, you, what would you recommend for the windshield? As far as like shades go? 50 or 35? 35 is a nice dark shade. Um, cuts out a really good amount of glare, but it stands out a lot. 50% nice lighter tinted look, um, but it doesn't stand out quite as much. Plus you can do ceramic, so. If you want a soft one, get the clear crush. I use the pink for cleaning. Yeah, some people use different ones for cleaning and, and then they use uh, insulation ones. I think it's nice to have them separate I've always had the habit of using the same squeegee for literally everything. So cleaning, rinse it off, squeegee, everything should be good. But if you want to be a little bit more separate, that's totally fine. How much time do you think the plotter cut out for you today? None. <laughs> It was very comparable. So, I mean, we did the back glass, but like what, what extra time am I gonna have on that back glass? I had the glass aid applied. I would have cut the whole thing out. I mean, maybe a couple of minutes. I don't think it would have made that big of a difference. So, all right, before I shout out some Super Chats, this is a really good question too. Um, in most of what I do with that machine, you're not gonna see it cut out time for me. Um, if anything, it's gonna make me a little bit lazy. So the, where that machine is going to come in real handy is like when you've got three, four appointments um, and you really just have a lot to do, then you have somebody cut out patterns for you, weed them, get them set up, and then you just come in, shrink them, and then install them. You save a lot of time that way personally. You can knock out a lot of work. That's where they're going to save you about the most amount of time. So if I were to cut out both of the, both the front doors together, then cut out the rear, um, then the back glass, then have it all set up, I mean, maybe a couple minutes. Honestly, like how long does it really take me to cut all that stuff out without the plotter anyway? So we're really shaving down minutes here. Um, most of the time goes into the installation, like the, the prep work, and the installation. So when somebody knows what they're doing, um, and then you can have another person cut things out for you, that's where it's a big advantage. So um, I, if you're just a one-man show, it'll save you some times on things like if I had a truck in here. It would save me a lot of time on that, because trucks are kind of a pain to cut out anyways, unless they're the big solid back windows. 
Um, but if I had a, like a triple setup, right? Oh, I'm sitting there cutting out each individual one and it's just some extra tedious work and there's a lot of in and out of the truck if I cut it on the inside. Well, with that thing, I can just cut out all three and then they're basically quarter windows at that point. So on trucks, it'll save me a lot of time. Um, some more annoying pattern back windows, uh, it's gonna save me time, so like something like a Jeep Wrangler. It'll definitely save me time on something like that. Something where I'm putting a significant amount of time into cutting that kind of stuff out. Um, but, like I said, if you are a one-man show and you, and you can afford to get an assistant, having an assistant literally run that machine, pull the cars in and out, start cleaning some of the windows, man, that'll save you a ton of time. And you can start then working on doing more, uh, doing more than just a couple of cars a day. Because what, what the tinter is the best at is, like, I mean, you can do everything, but installation, bar none, is something that is incredibly difficult to teach to anybody. So you focus on installation and you have them run the machine because it doesn't take a lot of skill to run that machine. And then all of a sudden, they, they're, they're a huge bonus for you. You're, you're getting multiple things done at the same time. So that's, that's where it's gonna, it's gonna help out the best. So with that, let's shout out some super chats. Um, big thank you to Alligator, Patrick, Daniel, uh, Christopher, Michael. Oh, that was yesterday. Well, thank you again, Michael, for yesterday's super chat. <laughs> Much appreciated, you guys. Daniel Reno, where you been? He's been here. Where have you been, Jay? <laughs> Thank you so much for the support. I appreciate it. Oh, and that uh, brings up another, another little thing, too. Um, if you guys are just starting out and you're trying to decide whether or not to get a plotter or not, are they going to help you learn how to tint? Yes, they will. They, they cut out cutting, but you still need to know how to do it. So... Really, there's a significant amount of time that goes into cutting out a door. And then if I mess up that door, then I gotta spend all that time cutting out it again. Well, on a plotter, you can cut out a couple of doors really quickly. Um, so somebody like me that's very familiar with it, it's, it's very similar time frames. Um, somebody that isn't used to hand cutting as much, it's a huge time saver there. So when you're starting out and you can just knock out literally half of the process by a machine, it will save you time, but you still need to learn how to hand cut. Um, for those times that the plotter just doesn't work out, your machine's down, your software is being stupid, they didn't have the car, any number of those reasons, you still need to know how to hand cut. But when you're learning, yes, it will help you, but if you don't have a big budget when you're starting out, like the machine is $1,600, so you're better off investing that into some film. But if you have a little bit of extra money, then yeah, it's not a bad thing to get you because you will pay for that machine very, very quickly. So it is something that will help you out a lot in the beginning, um, but it's, it's not necessary. It will save some of that time. So like, I mean, should I spend, I guess a good question too is like, should I spend $1,600 in a plotter or should I go to a tint class? <laughs> I, th I think that machine would save you a lot. So that's, that, that's a real hard question to answer. Um, I, I'd almost say, suggest getting the plotter, having that available, and then deciding after the fact if you still need to take a tint class because some of the tint classes teaches you off of plotters. Aren't those shades illegal in your state in North America? <laughs> what about your state, bro? <laughs> No, it's not. Not if he's got a doctor's note. I have no idea if he has a doctor's note. I learned on a potter. That's, that's all I know. Uh, hand, cuffing, hand cutting is no friend of mine, unfortunately. So yeah, most people, I, I, can, I can almost bet you that if you learn off of a potter, you're always going to be going back to it, and you're going to cripple yourself on hand cutting. But that initial... Like, what are you trying to do in the beginning? You're trying to generate an income. So it's, it's an investment, but like it's gonna pay for itself very quickly. And the, the biggest priority in the beginning is tinning cars and starting to make some money, putting out good quality work, because that gets you more money. And 
if it's going to help you just make more money in the beginning to help pay for itself and less time you got to scrap film and whatever, then yeah, it's, it's, it's a smart move to do. Just know that you're going to have to hand cut. As far as I know, North America, you're not allowed to tint the shield dark at all. It depends on the state. We're, we're 50 states. Everybody's got different rules. There's like federal rules, and then there's... Then there's state rules. Everybody's got different rules. So uh, state of Michigan is you can do whatever you want on the front. They, they don't specify shades with a doctor's note. So there's without a doctor's note, and there's with a doctor's note. And then they haven't updated the, the law in years. So all righty. So we're, we're going to sign off here today. Hope that helped clear some general information on plotters. We're going to be talking a whole lot about them in the future. But if you do want, um, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this up because this has been charging for a minute, and this will. Is this one dead? Is this one dead? Okay, let me let me put this in the chat really quick. If you guys are interested in software, plotter software, then the one that I showed on stream today, Film Cut, you can get a free 30-day trial to it. I suggest if you have a plotter, everybody just go try it because I want to know more about it. If it really sucks for a lot of cars, I don't want to use it. So for now, free 30-day trial. For those of you that have it, let us know because people that are kind of having their finger on the trigger of should I get one or not really, really want to know. And I only test so many cars. Most of what we do is hand cutting here anyway. So are we having a stream tomorrow? Yep. Yep, there should be a stream tomorrow. Depends on how the schedule goes, but most likely. So we got some stuff scheduled for tomorrow, so I'll be back. So you guys have a good day. Um, go tint some cars, and uh, I will catch you tomorrow. Later.